My name is Paul Beer. I'm the uh, co-director of EcoEquity and a co-author of the Greenhouse Development Rights Framework. Some of you may have seen this. It's a, a program within which we actually look within countries and identify people by their responsibility and their capacity as individuals, not as, uh, as nations. And it's a, it would be a program which would do away with the Annex 1, Annex 2 distinction, appropriately take account of the different wealth and capacity of countries. I don't think it's ready to be negotiated right now, but it shows that you can think about this. Um, the other thing I wanted to say is in response to the, the concept of how do we need to change our rhetoric, I think the one word that has been missing from this conversation is solidarity. Thank you. Want to add anything to that? Reflections and solidarity, we're all agreed, I think. Let's have another question. Thank you, Abdel Habani from the Arab Commission for Human Rights. I have a proposal to change Global Humanitarian Forum in Global English Humanitarian Forum and the panel leadership for Copenhagen in English. And yeah, because the climate change, you need to, to invite people in French, in Arabic, in Chinese, in Russian. And I understand the message from the young people about the use of language, especially radio, not, spe not specifically in English. I have a question about, thank you, thank you. A question about the democratic sharing of information related to climate change, because you have two kinds of figures. You have a develop, developed country, they have uh, capacity, technological capacity to do measures. Poor, in, poor country, they don't have this capacity. They don't, and, uh, they don't have any information about this measure. The second, that you have uh, some uh, uh, corrupted, uh, corrupted autocratic regimes, and they are not interested to share democratically and with a free manner information related to climate change in order to control lands and people. Thank you. Thank you. Gumi. Well, on, on, on the first uh, comment, I think that point is well taken uh, about the need for us to, but, but it's interesting even in the languages that you listed, those are also exclusionary languages that actually, and usually it's a question of cost rather than intention. So I'm sure the organizers of the forum, it wasn't about exclusion, it was just the issue of uh, you know, the cost of uh, translation is expensive, but we have to get smarter about how we can have more uh, uh, diversity. Uh, can you take the second part? I, I lost my concentration there. <laughs> this is the first time ever that Kumi has lost his concentration. Let the record reflect that, please. Um, okay. Uh, on the second part, I think that what you're painting is exactly the political reality that we live in the world of today. And that is why the call for leadership amongst those countries that can effectively lead is even the more important. And that is why the concept of solidarity, which the gentleman in the back pointed out a minute ago, is even more relevant. Thank you. And we have another question over here. Uh, Ian Dunlop from Australia. Uh, thank you very much for your comments on the, um, the urgency of this matter, but I wonder if we're still not really missing the point. If you look at the latest science, you look at the Hansen information, the work coming out of Potsdam, the science has moved even further than I think you've been alluding to. Kumi, I think you mentioned the fact that we are going to have to get to the point of treating this on a war footing. Um, and I think, in, in fact, that's probably where we must end up because um, we're falling back, I think, into the all the time into process again. Um, unfortunately, the reality is that since uh, this discussion started 20 years ago, we've achieved virtually nothing. Global emissions are moving uh, even higher than we're expected. And there's no sign that um, politically we're coming to grips with that problem. So how do you put this onto a genuine war footing? I mean, I think after the, um, if you look at, say, the U.S. economy after Pearl Harbor, we turned, the, the economy was turned around in about 18 months. This is the sort of thing you have to do if we're to really start pulling emissions down. But that's the sort of discussion that needs to start, and I hear none of it. All I hear is about process that slight incremental change to where we've been leading into Copenhagen. So I'd appreciate your views on how we might move it forward. That's a good question. So, war footing, how do we do it? Would that be more successful? Kumi? I have to keep saying that I hate the imagery of war, but, but perhaps that's what's popularly 
you know, gets the message across. If history has taught us anything, that when we have faced a huge crisis of injustice or urgency, whether it was slavery, whether it was uh, the struggle against uh, apartheid, whether it was the civil rights uh, issues in the United States, if we look at what we can learn from history about when we got the kind of movement forward, it was when decent men and women stood up and said, this is something that is unacceptable, this is something that I'm willing to, to engage in passive resistance and peaceful disobedience and on, this is something I'm prepared to go to jail for, this is something I'm prepared to die for. And that, I think, is the moment where we've got to, if we're going to communicate the kind of urgency and seriousness to those that have the greatest power to actually make a, a difference. Beyond that, I think there's a range of soft campaigning that we will do and we must do and continue to do. But we have to be mindful that if we, you know, Albert Einstein once said, you cannot use the same tools and strategies and tactics that got you in the problem in the first place to solve the problem. And if you look at how the G20 is trying to solve the financial crisis, you can see exactly the same issue. However, I do think there's an opportunity in the current moment that we face. And that is we are living in a moment now that can be called a perfect storm, where we've seen a convergence of a range of different crises hitting us at the same time. You know, the climate crisis, the financial crisis, the fuel crisis, the food price crisis, the poverty crisis, and so on, are coming at a time where we have one of two options. One is we can be overwhelmed by it and just look at the huge challenges and treat them as independent, standalone crises. Or we can actually use this moment to say we need to think in a different way. We need to think out of the siloed boxes in which we operate, including in the NGO community. Uh, and to begin to say, can we have a more integrated, uh, or, or as the folks in the women's movement talk about, a more intersectional way of actually dealing with the crisis that we face. And I do think... Can you want to bring Jose Maria in here? Sorry. Uh, we're running out of time. Do you want to respond to this thought about the war footing? We're Is that the way forward? How do we do it? Um, is that the way forward? I come, with a, I come from a country with no army, and at the same time, I'm a West Point graduate. So I sit on both sides of the debate. Uh, I feel eloquently represented in the rest of my answer by what Kumi has already said. We are almost out of time. I would like to ask Kofi Annan to give us some last thoughts on this idea of leadership. You know, we've seen you hailed, and we don't need to be told why, for what you've done on so many different issues. Uh, what do you think is missing? No, I, I think um, leadership on this particular issue, as uh, our two speakers have said, cannot be left to political leaders alone. It requires almost a complete and total mobilization of society. We all have a role to play. We have a responsibility. And individuals, private sector, foundations, universities, we all have to play our role. And by becoming engaged and raising our voices and getting the issue up the political agenda, you will be able to get the politicians to act and take the necessary action. He talked of a war, war footing. The politicians will react if they know that they, their people are behind them. The people want action because it may cause them at the no next elections. And the only way they move is when they feel the pressure. Uh, and uh, individuals have power. And I think that message has come through. So let's uh, band together, let's campaign, let's put uh, wind in their sails. And you'll be amazed how many of them will show remarkable leadership when they know the people are there with them. Thank you. Spontaneous applause there. And I knew there was a reason why there was an empty seat here all along, Barbara Stocking from Oxfam. No, I just was making the point that we women are not very good at this. There was an empty seat here the whole session. And often there are empty seats at the table and we women don't come up and take the seat. And that's really what we need to do.